Okay, well, greetings, greetings, market rebels. Welcome to this week's macro measure. It is Wayne here recording really on the 27th. It's about 2 p.m. I think Eastern time. And uh, I'm traveling on the road up in Durham, North Carolina. And uh, this is my only opportunity to try to get this done. So I'm going to take advantage of it. Uh, I'm already in a little bit of heat or uh, hot water, whatever you want to call it. Disclaimer is right there for us. Uh, there's an intellectual property rights notice here for us. And then here's this week's very brief uh, a summary of just the notes I'm going to try to cover here, which will be tough. I'm just working on my laptop. But yeah, uh, my wife's turning up the heat on me a little bit um, because uh, we're supposed to be doing this and that. But I think my issue really is that I'll if I risk it, I, I might get back by the time I work through everything tomorrow that I've got to take care of, I might get back by 8 p.m. So things would be recorded late, go out very late. So I'm trying to take care of it now. Anyway, uh, sorry about last week as well. I uh, We had some kind of a Zoom issue with my normal desktop computer after there was an update done and uh, I tried to reinstall it and it didn't even work really properly even after that. So not sure what's going on there, but Unfortunately, I apologize. Uh, we had no idea that we thought the audio carried through. It seemed to, but apparently it turned off shortly after we got it. Uh, we got it uh, going there. So sorry about that. But this is really honestly probably a good week for me to be traveling. And I'm just going to cover all the notes right now because I'm here and then we'll move into the charts. But set your playback speed to 2x. Going to talk probably more than usual even. Uh, just because I don't have all that, uh, all the information I normally would have on my desktops to be able to flip to. But uh, it doesn't even matter really. And it's because I think a lot of you that a lot of you know that have been with Market Rebellion, been with us for years, you all know that these EPS reactions tend to dominate. Clearly, they've already done that uh, in certain cases already uh, this, this season. And we know that the FOMC reaction outcome is also something that tends to dominate. Um, sometimes news is made and there's big movement and sometimes you just get the reflexive volatility back and forth, up and down, and not much comes out of it. So uh, if news is made, you know, that's typically what the, the view shifts from what the market was thinking to what is now the new thought, then you do often see the action. As I noted on cocktail hour, you know, I, I think this is the time to be really nimble uh, and, and just until this all sorts out, just you're looking for singles and doubles, right? Because it's, it could be hard, not that it will, but it could be hard to get sustained trending price action just because you know, even if you do get some good uh, movement, right, the next later that afternoon or the next morning, there could be EPS and et cetera that, that upend things. So you've just got to really trade around this. You go through this every quarter, but uh, unfortunately, um, and we'll see, but hopefully it'll still produce some good opportunities. I still think on balance, you know, that risks can continue to grow. I've got greater concerns about where the market is relative to the underpinning or underlying economy. Um, but again, I don't trade on that. And uh, I just try to use the charts. That's what we try to really encourage folks to do just because when these things may, if ever impact is very difficult to say. And uh, we do, we have been, and we do keep an eye on the dollar and keep an eye on the 10 year yield, really other yields as well, but we always refer to the 10 TNX, the 10 year. And they they're, they kind of pulled a little reversal move attempt off a few weeks ago, but they've been playing possum for the last couple of weeks. So there's indecision. I think that's been apparent there. Probably right, makes sense because now that we're right, right there on the FOMC meeting that people will then start to react, right? But they may be kind of in a pause or hold until then. Uh, the MAG-7, I think overall, they still look good on balance. and uh, But I do see a few issues that appeared in those and in some sectors um, and a few stocks. Uh, the sectors, some sectors weakened. There were some rollovers and the SMH was a notable one, right? Where it was really going haywire still to the upside, and then they started to lay into it. And when I started started to see that being that its leadership, XLK was rolling over as well, I, I got some new fresh ideas in, in the uh, IWM and SPY's uh, put side ideas so folks could be ready to potentially trade. If we do see uh, some sort of significant pullback of some kind, 
probably worth noting because we've been waiting for it for, for a while. Energy definitely tried to perk a little. We did see some UOA. So um, again, downtrend is still in place there, but uh, maybe one to keep an eye on. That, that, you know, not just XLE, but other ones as well. So other maybe name, not only just sector uh, type ETFs, but you could also look at uh, individual stocks. So we did see some UOA start to, to pick up in there. So that was interesting. Uh, it's not really reaching that, hey, this is the big moment yet, but it still was a, probably a good sign. We've seen a lot of those, though, during the downtrend, and a lot of them just have had um, very unimpressive moves, and then they just reverted to the downtrend. Again, that's just typical trending action, and that's why counter-trend trading is hard, and people try to pick these reversals, and they do happen, of course, uh, from time to time, but a lot of times, if you overstay, you're welcome taking that trade. You, you end up regretting it. Anyway, we have to look at that overall for the market in terms of false breakouts, reversals, because that's what I'd be on guard for. Uh, there was an indecisive candle that developed in uh, in SMH, uh, I think in the MAG7, I'll show that. So uh, be ready, be on, be on guard, as I'm saying here, to, to react, right, if yields start to spring higher, uh, because that would mean, right, the whole lower sooner uh, argument that they trotted out again has again bitten the dust uh that happened last uh i want to say late winter um they were still pushing it uh they got really started pushing it then but then i would say it probably bit the dust by the time we got into second quarter um well through the second quarter really uh could be happening again we'll see um also look out for the pullback to former support. So we did break out on certain things, right? SPY, et cetera. Uh, see if that, that support level holds. And if they hold and start turning it again, right? That's kind of textbook for a lot of people. So that could also be a sign that you get you could get involved and use the use the reversal level, roughly speaking, as your as your stop, right? Where you think that okay, it held, maybe they're gonna try to really bounce this thing and go now. Um, and if they do, right. There could be this real uh, exclamation point that gets put on the rally that we've seen, um, and that could be a negative, right? So we're trying to think certain moves ahead of, right, to know what to be considering, right? So if they do really screen that after touching and going or holding and going, as I'm saying here, you could get this really strong rip uh, that would then get probably absurd uh, on some readings. And then at that point, um, maybe they priced a little too much in too soon and uh, they'll have to face the music. But you'll have to be trading around EPS and FOMC all week. And just in case that, that there's really a surprise here, uh, have your put butterflies picked out. Uh, that's what I would say on that one. If you don't know what that means, you've got to go in there and uh, ask Ryan to talk about that if he's got some time at the conclusion of a webinar that in a service that you're in. Uh, we had some folks asking us for examples of this on, on Tesla prior to earnings. And I just showed someone one that just was a basic one that just made sense to me. And uh, the, the next morning uh, with, with Tesla down, I think we paid around 92 cents for it in theory. It was, it was a paper trade. And uh, it was going for, I wanna say like two, 270 something or 280 so you know you were up 170 percent or something like that on your on your risk uh that you took so something like that anyway um that's the kind of thing that can happen right if uh it can pay off for you right just knowing how to do those types of things that are lower dollar risk but still offer some pretty good reward if there really is some kind of a significant pullback so on that note let me get out of here shut this part of it down and then let's talk about the, the charts. So I'm starting out with this mag seven chart for everyone this week, because I think this is key. Uh, it has been key. You can see that pattern going way back there on the weekly chart. You can see how they had the cup and handle going and they've been working this thing up. And so that's pretty good overall still, I think on balance, but you know, this is a, Pretty much standard, right? I guess you could call that sort of like the long-legged doji. That's really a doji. I'm not a big candlesticks person. I just think uh, they're a small percent of my overall weighting. 
Uh, but sometimes I think they matter more than others. This could be one of those times where that is really indecisive and really not convincing, right? That you're supposed to continue to go uh, and, <clears throat> and not, not really convincing the way that things finished out on the week, excuse me. So with that in mind, you know, the breakout level was probably back in here. So we're talking about, oh, about 150 points or something along of, of this sort of monstrosity that's the MAG-7 cobbled together. But that, that would put you down here, you know, somewhere near 1950-ish at, at an extreme maybe. But you could see, right, that kind of a pullback, test that, you know, in, and then maybe bounce and go from there over the course of, you know, the weeks that follow. So just keep your keep your eye on that kind of a situation. Um, let's look at the daily on this, and that would probably look a lot like right. If we put, uh, let me just get this, and we'll put this here. And I'm working off a laptop, so I just feel really out of sorts. So I apologize for that. But this line would come in right near that 1950. So if this thing starts cracking, you know, it may come back and that kind of puts you near that 50 SMA as well. So it's not out of the question if they really get something that uh, from the Fed more than likely that they don't like. Uh, don't know that, that that will happen. Of course, right? I'm just saying in the odd chance that the Fed uh, disappoints them and they decide to start selling as a result, just something to think about uh, where that could come back to. And of course, if these weights are getting hit, then uh, you all know what that means for the uh, the market, right? With all those heavyweights getting smacked, or at least on balance getting smacked, that'll put a damper on things. Uh, you can see what happened there. Kind of a, here's your daily on the SPY. Kind of right a, a week where they win, but it was sort of a, once you got through, I think, Tuesday, you really had kind of a messy, noisy market on your hands with a lot of back and forth. There just wasn't really strong sustained trending action for very long and that may make sense right in light of the fact that there's more eps due uh <clears throat> they're the big dogs excuse me and there's also uh the fomc as we've noted so that's kind of to be expected if you go to a weekly look you know i think this still looks really good there's really not much to complain about it you really didn't close very far off the all-time high and you've broken out and you really would be, right, I think you'd really be up here. I think that is the all-time high, right? I'm not mistaken, but so yeah, I think so. Yeah, so that is the new all-time high. That's what I thought. And uh, that's where I would say that you, oh, it's not giving me my little magnification there. Any? Oh, there it is. Okay. So you could get a little more when you look at kind of the channel it's working in. It could go a little further. Remember, they've got the big, the big dog EPS to work with. And You've seen some of the moves that they've already made, right? And this is really what they do. You now, this has been, this has been my, I don't know, what would I call it? Uh, not that I'm the only one that notices this, but this has been my way of looking at this for a very long time. Is that they use, they use, right? If you remember, you're you're supposed to market. You're really supposed to trade on news uh, in the future. Like you're 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 supposed to know what 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 that's going to ha what's go that's going to be. Uh, what these guys have done right, is use that kind of really good news that you would think would already be priced in when you've ran things. That's when they really put things in the stratosphere, right? So if they can use these EPS, this is the perfect, this is what they do. They really put what I call the exclamation point on these big moves that they've gotten. And with that's really is sort of like the gap up on news and then they're out, right? They're pretty much getting out somewhere afterwards in terms of short-term trading or even just saying like this thing's risen too high for now, too far, too fast. I'd rather take some of this off the table, rotate it into something else, or take some of this off the table and wait for this thing to kind of pull back a little bit or what have you. Okay, so that's really the exclamation point move is really common um, when, you're get to, when you get to the later stages. So you have to be on guard for that as well. And it doesn't, doesn't we don't have to have a pullback first, right? So. We don't have to go back to support after a, a delivering somewhat of a false breakout to then get the exclamation point. They might do it even without pulling back further. I mean, the market really hasn't had much of a memory from Friday to, to Monday anyway uh, of lately. Here's, here's your perfect kind of cup and handle. Um, 
looks a little too perfect in some ways, but some people probably would quibble with that. Here's a line that I had working here on the weekly on the cues. I'll make it blue, and then if you can see it, hopefully unblue it, kind of make it white again. And, you know, it made it right up to that line, and uh, it stopped there. And you can see that candle isn't all that impressive in the way that it closed. So that is a little concerning there. Uh, this, of course, is somewhat similar to, to what we saw in SMH. Remember, these are this is a weekly chart. So uh, let me see if I can get that SMH. This should show right somewhat similar uh, in the way that that final kind of that weekly candle traced out in the end. So not all that, you know, not all that wonderful, not what you really, you, after a great, a really strong candle like this, you'd rather see, right, this thing at least push up a little bit and hold, but it turned out to be kind of a rough close. I, th I think that's because it became, well, news was part of it, but I think it just also became extremely overbought in the short run there as well. So when you get to those extremes, they're all, they often find news to to sell on, uh, and that's that's what you got. But I did see something interesting where, despite Santa being a the Santa rally being a bust, the first five days of January being a bust, that if they do eke out right a nice finish for the month, and remember they're only going to need a, they only have a few more sessions to really get through to uh, avoid having a really problematic January. And usually the year, despite the other other two uh, notable patterns, seasonal patterns we talked about that failed, still end up with a pretty good year whenever that's occurred. Now, things are always different, but that's something, just a minor thing to keep in mind. But if you look at the channel here, this may not be perfectly drawn. You know, I may have to modify this resistance line that I put in here probably a while ago. And if I do that, probably take it to there. I'll make a little modification down to here and we'll work with it sort of like, I'll work with it sort of like that for now, but you got up there, right? The point is that you got up there towards it regardless of where we place it. So it really did get sort of extended. It doesn't mean you can't jump outside the channel. It happens. It's just that if you get high readings and you're sort of at the upper end of a channel and a lot of the so-called news has been priced in, right? You've got to be on guard. So, this is your area. Um, you know, this is the lead dog. I mean, XLK trades a lot like this, and the Qs, you know, they're similar. The correlations are pretty, pretty strong. These are all weekly charts we're still looking at here. So, if you look at that, it's it's somewhat similar, right? And not not really a pretty candle, but overall, they've you've got to say that these areas have had a good January, right? So, uh, if it's here or better, right? If they manage to kind of keep it close to here or better, then you finish out with a really good start to the year. And that's encouraging for a lot of people. I'm not saying they're right. I'm just saying that's the, that's sort of the legacy tradition, if you will. So not good, right? Me forecasting this or that with so many earnings reports due out from the big dogs. I think that's why this is sort of a short video this week, just to Get yourself mentally prepared for what could happen. Um, again, with false breakouts, right? If they don't like something they're hearing on conference calls, the FOMC. But really, when you get into this kind of a situation, it can be hard. You know, and it just really can be hard. But the thing I would say that we haven't covered so far is that those those uh, lovable hedge funds, they're they're at it again. Where in some ways that I saw data where. Some of these guys are extremely, extremely long, a lot of these big names. Um, and then there's other guys that are extremely short that are fighting it, right? So uh, that is very, a very interesting combination. And uh, clearly, right, when these guys start shorting the daylights, they really open themselves up to vulnerabilities. So you could have a situation, why I mentioned both of those, of course, is to paint the right picture. But you could have a situation, if you think about it, where one group is sort of forced to buy and that's we do get some outsized earnings jumps right that they they really put it to those guys and you know the, those those folks that have the big score on their hands they may want to lighten up a little bit and then distribute into that right so if you do stay involved in earnings and you do get an exceptional uh pop you know overnight i, I really would be capturing my profits first and then worrying about 
remaining in the trade some way later, right? Uh, you can, you can all, I would always kind of secure that win and then decide, well, these are the, these are the new calls I want to keep riding if you plan to stay in, but don't, in other words, don't let a spread order upend you, miss a fill, and then you get a real volatile situation where you never get your transaction done and the stock starts giving back a lot of its gains because I've seen it happen. So with that in mind, you've seen how good really everything, all those things really look good. The QQQ, right, the, the spiders, the MAG7, on balance, these things look good, but they did have and XLK it had kind of a sketchy finish to the week. You can see the Dow right there, right? You're looking at like 100 points right off of that high, and that's it. And so this thing uh, is still powering up, right? And this is even after the rate story that helped launch things really started to come into question, right? So they're, <laughs> they're, it's it's only become more and more pushed out where – January, there's no longer an expectation of any cut. Uh, I forget what the percentage is, but it's extremely high. And then they're still favoring nothing happening by March as well. That's the slight, I think, favorite on that. So the whole story, again, is at risk of falling apart. And again, that's why you've got to be ready to be nimble. You've got to have your put butterflies picked out, especially if there's language that comes out of that of, of the statement or the Q&A that follows that... Uh, they're thinking like we we're probably not looking at a cut until I don't know. They say we're looking maybe at a summertime cut or if the data does this or that. You might not like that. It might really throw some real uh, real cold water onto things. But overall, right, it's hard to really argue with these charts on balance. Right, these that's all a weekly chart. Now, I I think the weekly is more powerful than the daily. That's how I view it. And you know, I I have different ways of looking at things that I think have helped me over all the years. Um, but I think one sign you know that we have to keep an eye on for is I mean eye out for is IWM, right? This thing's this is really a great trader. We use it a lot of times as a bonus name, or if we can get it in there for some of the services where we're looking for uh, to get involved with volatility, right? Nice price action. Uh, this thing can really deliver. So. Uh, remember, if they do use the EPS to start ramping, they could you could get a nice little. I mean, this is really on a weekly basis, very nice thrust up upwards, a really kind of controlled nice pullback, and then a resumption right attempt starting. Uh, you get the little reversal off support right there. There's a 200 week in purple, and then you start to resume the trend, right? And so if you get another leg out of this, this this would really carry. This is one of the missing pieces. This is kind of the things I always say about things can start out looking pretty poor, and then you're right about that. And a lot of people are noting how how bad this rally really is in terms of breadth and participation and how a lot of things have been left behind and other stocks are even going down. And it's so concentrated, it's not healthy. And that's all true, but the ship can get righted. I'm not predicting that. I'm just saying that you can be right, 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 right. And then suddenly, like one, all it will take is one week where the gang gets a hold of this and they start to really uh, move this thing up, right? So they get a hold of, they get a hold of uh, the IWM, they really move it up. And then a lot of other things, a lot of things key off of that. And they say, well, if they're willing to start buying the smaller stocks, they must really think the economy is going to really continue to chug or find a way to chug better whatever, however you want to describe it or classify it. So keep your eyes on this because it really is, I think, good for that in terms of a barometer. Um, and I do think the Bitcoin and we, we actually had paper and coin. I put an idea in late, I think on Friday on this one. And it's been, it's actually a bullish idea. Uh, and let me see, why is this not flashing? So we can get this to show better, hopefully. Well, it's not working with me too well, but this is this is also a you know, decent barometer. The you know the crypto area getting bid again is a de decent barometer for a risk on, and so this has also had a strong push right that finished the year uh, pretty strongly right rallied very strongly in the last couple of months of the year, then uh, has had a significant pullback and now it's trying to find support so. 
uh, just trying to be there, be ready for subscribers uh, in case you have seen the start of something with last week's candle there in coin. And if this, when this thing starts to rumble, it can really rumble. So we've got some, we got a bullish idea in there. I'm not a big fan of going counter trend. I think the intermediate term trend here the last five weeks clearly right is down. But sometimes, right, you just have to anticipate that this could be, I think, could be a nice, typical, really great FIB situation where just above the 61.8 retracement of the whole move from up uh, up in the last few months of the year, you get a pullback to there. They buy just in front of that, and uh, maybe they try to start reversing. I don't know. I'm just saying if risk on happens again, because – Maybe the FOMC gives them what they want. Maybe the earnings come out the way they want. Maybe they hear what they want on conference calls. Then maybe you get that, okay, well, we're back in business. It's been a deep correction, but it's still bullish because it's not really a super deep correction overall, right? So you could start to see that energize. And that's also a good space to keep your eye on. So keep your eye on that and keep your eye on the yields, keep your eye on the dollar, but especially I think yields this and IWM are helpful. Uh, the other thing would be a view of the sectors, and I apologize because I'm dealing on this laptop, and it's a pretty good sized laptop, but obviously it's not my 43-inch uh, screens that I've got at my desktop. But I just want to point out that things, right? The 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 concentration really was in XLK, in XLC, uh, and the good news is XLF, and I talked about that on Cocktail briefly. So those all really did fairly well. Um, and we can add to that XLE. You can see why, right? It's sort of late to get in right now in a way, because this is what they do with these sharp sort of bright rallies. Uh, and then they it fades back down because of the trend, right, that it's in. But this is something that's starting to get interesting because I think you're getting up towards an area where this could be the start of a reversal. So again, Keep your eyes on that. You can see why I mentioned that it's starting to perk up because technically it perked up and also via UOA hits, it definitely perked up. But a lot of other things, notably, right, that just are not things I think are important. Like, oh, I've got this shifted around. They looks like an it looks like this got reordered somehow. So I don't know. This is a different grid than usual. So my apologies on that. But Here's XTN. I wanted to highlight XTN. So that hung in there, but that really hasn't worked its way but anywhere towards the highs, right? And the same thing for, uh, where's my XLY I'm looking for here? Oh, there it is. XLY, right? Discretionary. So this also kind of languishing, right? So those are, to me, those are a couple of important areas. I do think Amazon's reporting uh, just to kind of hit on Really, I guess both of these sort of. Um, I think that's reporting in the next couple of days. But uh, I'll go check it when we get back over to the single chart. But, you know, you really want to see these two start to do better in my book. You really do. Um, the good news is that even though it wasn't a spectacular week, at least for XLB and XLI, they stopped really, right? They they started to, uh, they they did a little before and they were able to hold on to really the prior week's action to a, to a large extent. So they're not roaring back, but at least they're looking a little more poised to attempt to. So it's a little bit of mixed stuff across the board. I, I don't think anything awesome happened. Probably another interesting thing worth noting is XLC really finished strongly, right? So that, you know, that a couple of the big names in there are going to be Google and Meta. And, you know, that that's, so that's somewhat indicative of that. So that could also that's also very strong. Uh, no real massive damage was done in the XLK. I'll make that a little bit larger. Uh, it did pull back to a line we had, and it, it's kind of holding right there. You can see probably right those that area right there near 200 point. Let's just call it 200. You start dropping below 200 in XLK, and there could be an issue. But overall, you're probably looking okay. Let me see if I can just move this little bit to get this out of my way. Well, let me do that. No, it's not really letting me do that. I really wanted to try to highlight here in XLF, but XLF really roared um, and, and closed strongly. We had bullish and bearish ideas ready to go because of where, where that was in RSI land. 
Uh, so we were trying, if, it, if they continue to work at higher, we were ready to go. If they pulled off some kind of reversal, we were ready to go, but they've really jammed that up there. That is really getting up there again, it kind of broke out. You can see that. So that's also right, I would say a very good sign. So there's some good signs and then there's some bad signs, but with you need to see if they do walk away from SMH further um, and they do walk away from some of the big tech that's already worked after this week, we need to see where they're going to go with that, right? Where are they going to rotate into? And there's the SMH just on the daily. And so this is why when I started to see this action here on Thursday, that's why I started to kind of quickly cobble together some of the recent UOA we've had in IWM and in uh, the SPY because I didn't really have much else to work with. We had a diamonds bullish idea, but it, I don't think it's done very much yet. I try to get those in when I can, excuse me, because the diamonds UOA is relatively rare versus I would say the other three, but they, they see some, there's players that really seem to like SPY and I did IWM. UQQ is probably in third place and diamonds are fourth in terms of how frequently we see UOA hit, at least the way our team likes to look at it and add it. But this is what I started to see. And I thought if this starts to become vulnerable, people will notice that, you know, the leaders starting to really sputter and reverse and you could end up with, uh, you could end up with spillover profit taking, but uh, we got a little bit of that, but right, not too much. The market ended up hanging in there. And I think that's probably because they know that there's news due, right? And they might be able to use this news that's coming out really this week. It's a huge, just huge week. They, they'll be able to use that news to move stock prices, right? One way or the other. And Amazon is due out. So we were, at least we guessed right about that. It looks like it's on 2-1. So what is that Thursday before the, before the open? Uh, let's see. Yep. Thursday before the open. So you'll get the Amazon report, but yeah, I mean, all of them, I shouldn't say all of them, right. But a lot of them are due out, right. I think Apple, one that also kind of rolled over from before again, it's coming, came back towards the 50 there in gold. So, right. If you get anywhere near there and you start to see the market rallying and they support that, they might use that nice little healthy pullback to try to maybe put something together in front of earnings. We'll have to wait and see. But that's also happening on 2-1, it looks like. It looks like on 2-1. So, yeah, that's going to be after, though. So, Apple, you know, you, there's 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 Thursday afterwards. Uh, what about Google? Let's see what happens with Google. When's that due? And that also is due. I'm not going to go to the time and date on all of them. But you can see why I'm saying between that and FOMC, right, I mean, it's, it's big-time EPS from the biggest weights. And... Uh, you know, you if you think that they're all going to crush it, uh, well, oops. If you think they're going to crush it, let's see. Yep, this is also looks like two one on. So this is these are just massive, right? All these all these big dogs reporting are just massive. I knew we had a lot, and there's other sem. I think AMD, which I'll check. There you go. I mean, you're just a few days away. Even is Microsoft also this? Wow, Microsoft's the day before one thirty. We already got. Um, we already got Tesla, right? So we have to, and we know NVDA is uh, a few weeks away, I believe. We did see some late UOA on that. We've had an idea in there. I think it's done. I think it's done fairly well. I usually cover these ideas for the extra week past when we, the initial um, contract selection that we make. So if we pick 10, 19, I usually cover it uh, through the following week, which would be the 26th in this case. But we did see some paper come in on that as well. Uh, and I do think, but I'm pretty sure they're not due for, they're maybe not due for a couple of uh, weeks in NVDA. I don't see the little, well, let's see when the last one was. Yeah, 1121. So that would be about 221, right? Three months, later, roughly. AMD, I'm pretty sure is coming out though. Let me double check. Yeah, AMD definitely will be out. So this is, right, this, it doesn't get too much bigger, right? Unless, unless, NVIDIA uh, starts to move their earnings closer to everybody else's, it probably can't get too much bigger. So you can see why I'm sticking with the, I'm not going to try to give you predictions with all this news. I definitely think that I usually expect beats, 
Uh, 75% of the time is my estimate for how often uh, companies beep, right, Dell? If you and I've always made this case that if you really were putting out fair, honest estimates of what you really thought, then the Wall Street consensus would be about somewhere near 50-50, right? But they always sandbag these things on balance uh, in the aggregate, basically, when you look at where the Wall Street consensus is, so they can keep the uh, the seals clapping. Yeah, yeah, there was another beat, there was another beat, there was another beat. So that, that comes out to 75% of the time you get a beat. So uh, I would think, right, I would think, and I don't know much about these the what's going on at these companies because I don't even really have the time to to, to do anything like I'd really like to. Just there's too too many things we're analyzing and and stuff like that in is kind of like triage style and doing doing the best we can within time constraints. Uh, and then from there, you know, we 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 just try to do the best we can and we just can't go into the deep research. But I would just think that on balance, these companies are likely to have good things to say and you know probably on balance. W- win, right? I don't I don't think there's been, even with the fudging that's going on, I don't think there's been enough uh, short-term deterioration of various things yet uh, to really have uh, earn, earnings disappoint. And plus, corporate America has become expert at, you know, uh, let's say massaging all these things to get the, to get the win and avoid Wall Street's wrath. So that's the other side of it. But let me think about anything else. Um, now, there really, there really was, there really isn't anything else that I could say. But we'll see if we can just take a quick look at the oil future, because we did talk about energy, and I think it's a, a, a popular topic. You know, what's energy, and it's important. Uh, let's see what that looks like if it lets us. Ooh, okay, and you can see that's starting to look a little bit better as well, right? So there's, you can see that sweeping up, and you can see that maybe, right, they're getting beyond the downtrend resistance. So just like with XLE, a little bit more positive work, and it could really start to open up a much brighter uh, initial future for itself. Problem is probably though that if it does get there in a hurry, with the kind of buying we've seen there, right, you'll you'll get into overbought territory. Um, so it will be very easy to end up in a uh, overbought state, right? And you know that that's not what you really ideally not where you want to be when you start to enter something. So that just makes you know, the triggering more vulnerable, everything a little bit more tricky. Uh, but you can still trade it. You just got to be extra disciplined with it. But you're at 66 already on the daily RSI. Right? So if you do get more push, you're going to be right there. Not that 70, it becomes an immediate sell, but I think the general idea holds. I think everyone probably understands what I'm getting at. But if I just extend this down here like this, let's see if I can get this to extend the right way. There you go. So there's that line and you broke through there, right? So that's really where that channel was left behind. And ever since then, you can see how the dynamic has really shifted. So the dynamic existed right while this was downtrending in this channel. And now there's an attempt to shift the dynamic and leave the channel behind. Maybe there's a new, uh, new dynamics are coming in there affecting that market. I again, I, I wish I did have the time to take a look at things closely, but I don't know what what exactly what's causing that. But anyway, that's definitely a lot more promising than it's been in a while. Again, only negative on XLE and you know the oil future. Just a uh, casual look here is that they're probably just going to, in the near term, be able to get overbought more quickly. It looks like there's a little bit of lag from XLE in terms of RSI, so maybe it has more room to go. So I would just keep an eye on that one. Um, That is, you know, perversely, it's a good sign for the economy, maybe the world economy, maybe this has to do with China. I don't really know, but uh, perversely, it, it hurts the whole inflation situation. So with the Red Sea situation and also with, uh, energy prices potentially being tougher on consumers, right? That is not a really great combo. Um, it, it, help, it will not help the inflation sooner, uh, sooner. Uh, I mean, rates lower sooner argument that is being promulgated for a second time in a big way. So again, we shall see. Um, don't, and I'll just flash, I'll flash dollar and I'll flash uh, TNX for everyone on a daily basis here. Uh, 
again, you can see that I'm kind of just calling that right playing possum. It's just you're you're you've got to wait to get through this, right? That's why I think like making a prediction uh, right now, like this this is when I I back off from you know leans and things like that even more because rather than just trying to be objective about the chart because I don't know what you could really say there. Is it is it looking better than it was a month ago? Yes. Could could it get stopped in its tracks and sent right back down again? It could. Right. There's no way to say that whatever comes out this week could really uh, make the dollar uh, put the dollar back under pressure. And the same thing could be true for yields. Right. So it looks better. I see really the possibility. Sure, that it could continue to lift and that would not be a good thing, you would think. But it's all really probably has to do with what happens this week between auctions, if there are any, which I'm not sure of, and whatever happens with the FOMC and the Q&A and how that's interpreted. So yeah, unfortunately that's the way it is. And that's why uh, being, you know, I think just being nimble, getting your singles and doubles, there's going to be opportunities. And I hate to use all these cliches, but as everyone notes from time to time, you know, bulls make money, bears make money, pigs get slaughtered. And so it's okay, I think, to be more piggish in certain things um, at certain times. But overall, I think when you get into earnings season, um, and you don't have a strong lean on things. If you do, it's different. But if you don't have a strong lean and you've got FOMC risk and you're not really sure, I'd probably still bet bullish more more so than not because that's just the nature of the market. That's the nature of the street. The whole thing is rigged to try to take things higher. But it's all within the context of where am I now? Am I really overbought entering that? Has all the good news been priced in? All those kinds of things to think about. But I would go with, you know, I would lean bullish in most cases, especially if you're not really super overbought already, but you're in an uptrend, right? To take the trend into consideration. But these are things where it just pays to me. You get good, quick bursts and you can get nice little returns and trade around this week and still come out nicely. I think that's really the win, right? I think the, the first win is not getting smoked because you realize there's a lot of potential, um, momentum shifting news items that are on the way. So not getting beat up is, 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 is a big win uh, because a lot of people try to stick and move with this stuff and they do get beat up trying to play the, the earnings reaction game. Uh, but if you can around that, instead of, even if you're neutral, you're probably winning versus a lot of people, but if you can really trade around it and do very well, not maybe as good as during rip roaring modes, the market's in, at times, you're still doing pretty well. So that's really, I guess, the overall take. Uh, the summary for me would be keep your eyes on the same old stuff that we've been talking about mostly. You've got to keep your eyes on the TNX and dollar. See how they react after, uh, you know, after Powell and company do their thing. Uh, you've got to see if they XLE can keep going. See if that starts to matter at all or if that's still sort of interpreted as a positive. Uh, by the market. If the IWM joins in the party, there's a lot of potential there. It's a good sign for the market overall. That might lead things to uh, the breadth really picking up and, um, here and there. And uh, those, that's not what I wanted. That would lead the, to the breadth picking up in the market. And you know that would be a nice fan out, in other words, that you would get, um, get things broadening out and more things participating. And after kind of taking it on the chin for a while, breadth has also started to recover a little bit, which is good to see, you know, which is good to see. So they've gotten things back on track a little bit and we're just waiting really, everybody's waiting really, I think to get past this and see what happens. And I would say that uh, again, if there's massive leaps uh, that um, stock prices higher on these earnings events, they're going to be pretty overbought at that point. And my, my, my first order of business would be to capture profits. Um, the other leadership areas to keep your eye on are obviously SMH. It's got to be it and your MAG-7, right? There are so many are reporting. You've got to keep your eyes on all that stuff this week. And the AMD, um, maybe there's one other semi that escapes me right now, but AMD obviously is a big deal. So keep your eye on that one too. But I think that's it. Um, I've got to do, I've had to do the best I could while on the road here. So I do hope something we covered helps you out this upcoming week or some week in the future. Hopefully I'll be able to get back on track with a little more uh, without any technical issues and without any encumbrances 
and have my full rig running and maybe be able to put the notes together the way I like to. Um, that would be nice to be able to do that next weekend or in front of the weekend, if even if, even better if possible. So we'll uh, we'll tr we'll shoot for that. But again, I want to wish everyone a great conclusion to their weekend. A great week ahead. Just be nimble, stay safe, be smart, um, and get through it. Because on the other side of this kind of volatility pickup, there could be some good trending action one or reversal action. And I feel as though your charts are truer and stock technical analysis works better when you're not facing these, when you're not facing the devil of EPS and facing the devil of FOMC. I think you you get truer reads and stocks just move more naturally when they're not influenced by these EPS, um, EPS releases. So on that note, I'm going to wrap it up. Thanks again. Everyone take care, and I'll be in touch through the updates, webinars, et cetera, newsletters this week. Thanks again.